So these two questions, they are asking you some relatively simple kinematics questions. Um, let's hope I can both do both of them in time. So this question says, during a slap shot, I have no idea what it is. Don't need to know. What I do need to know is that the puck is being accelerated. So I have a puck that is, oh, there's uh, some initial speed. It has some initial speed of 10 meter per second. And it undergoes some acceleration that are we being told? No, we don't know the acceleration. After the acceleration is done, it has some final speed of 42 meters per second. And it says, if this shot takes, oh, we are given some duration of time for the shot. It takes time of 3.33 um, times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. Uh, what is the distance over which the puck accelerates? Interesting. Now, there are different ways to go. Let me show you the shortest way to do it by appealing to one of the kinematics formulas I've written down. Let me go up and copy them down so I don't have to keep writing them. <laughs> so, okay, so these are the kinematics equations, formulas I've written down before. And um, there's a, once you get trained enough in spotting um, kind of matching existing information with the missing information, you get good. And I've been doing this for a while. And I've gotten good. And what I will say is that this will allow me to answer this question using a single formula. Because I've been given initial and the final velocity. And what surprised me was that I wasn't given acceleration. So if I'm using any of these other equations, I'll need to first solve for acceleration somehow. So that introduces an extra step. Here, if I use this, no need for acceleration. I've been given delta t. I'm being asked for delta x. So I can just solve it. In fact, I can just do this, I think, in my head. I'll just calculate the right-hand side in my calculator and then multiply by delta t that's been given. That should have given me delta x. So the right-hand side is going to be final initial speed, 10, plus the final speed, 42. Remember, it's plus, not minus. Your textbook does the derivation. Divide by 2. And I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply to the duration of time we've been given. Um, this E notation is how you enter the scientific notation on SageMath and a lot of calculators, actually. So that gives me 0 0.867 meters as the distance. I, I don't know if that's uh, reasonable or not. I would uh, have to know something about hockey to have any idea if a close to a meter's distance is a reasonable distance for acceleration. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Someone who knows hockey better than I do hopefully knows. Um, in any case, that's this question. Once you know, and I see, you know, this is why there's the temptation for people to just uh, rely on formulas. And to the extent that maybe you are learning to memorize these formulas, that's great. I would actually recommend that you do that. Um, but I do want you to develop additional problem-solving skills that go beyond simply using these formulas. So next question. And it says a uh, basketball referee tosses a ball straight up uh, for the starting tip off at what velocity? Okay, so we are being asked for initial velocity. Must uh, basketball... Pl oh, so, all right, then let me just... Uh, no, it's not the ball that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the player. Um, and so the player has to jump with some initial velocity. Uh, leave the ground to rise uh, one point. So the player will have risen to... And for simplest sake, let's say um, the distance that we are measuring, it's from like a center of mass to center of mass. This distance, we'll say, is delta y of 1.2 meters. I know, you know, 1.2 meters above the floor, it might be the location where their feet is at. Um, I don't want to complicate it. I just want to make it simple. Uh, what we have is that we have been given the 
um, the, the vertical distance they must travel. And we are being asked for initial velocity. And I guess uh, as I'm thinking through it, um, if I go strictly by the numbers that we have been given explicitly, it should feel like we don't have enough information. Because some of the information you have to infer from the situation. So um, you have that the players rising up to this height. And as you imagine that situation in your head, think it through, you should be able to have a reasonable idea of what the final speed of the basketball player is at the very top of their motion. And it should be zero. Or at least if the 1.2 meters is kind of the threshold value. If they're going any faster, then they would be going higher up. If So, so you can infer this information, what the final velocity of a basketball player is. And uh, you haven't been given acceleration explicitly, but you assume this is on Earth. So you assume that acceleration must be minus g or minus 9.8 meter per second squared, where minus a sign indicates that it's in the downward direction. So, so that's the set of information you have been given. Um, some distance traveled, final velocity through that inference, and acceleration from the assumption that this is happening on Earth and you are being asked for initial velocity. And if you have this set of uh, kinematics formulas memorized, then it, sh it should occur fairly quickly to you that this expression has everything you need. It has um, final velocity that you know, uh, it has acceleration that you know, it has displacement that you know, and really the only thing that you don't know is this that you can solve for and um, and, and get a numerical value for from all the other known quantities. So let me solve for the VI squared. So my, oh, actually, instead of that, let me use Sage Math. I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy and just let this calculator do everything for me, including the algebra. So let me first declare the variables, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and um, delta x. Um, I think that might be everything I need. Um, yeah, I'll just plug in numerical value of acceleration. So those are my variables. And my equation is going to be V final squared is equal to, and note the difference between the assignment and equality symbol. Uh, VI squared plus 2 times acceleration times uh, delta x. And I'll put in the right signs for acceleration and delta x so that they end up in the right values. So I'm assigning this equation as the value for this variable. And if I go equation one, yeah, that's what, what they are. So I can solve this equation. And uh, if you are not sure with the syntax for solve, you can use internal documentation. Again, the most useful part of the documentation I find are the examples that kind of give you an idea of how to set things up and what to put into do the things you want to do. So solve, I'm going to be solving this equation one that I typed in there. Going to be solving it for V initial. Um, and I guess that's it. Um, it'll treat everything else as the known quantity. So when I do that, it gives me two solutions for V initial. And I think you can kind of see from here, one is negative, one is positive because of the square, both the negative and positive versions can be solutions. So we're just going to pick the positive solution. So that'll be the, um, so underscore means the previous output. And I'm going to pick the second element, which has index one of the previous output. So that's going to be my solution. Plug in the numbers with the substitute syntax. So my acceleration is minus 9.8. And my delta x will be 1.2. Make sure these have opposite signs. My v final is 0. Then I get initial speed must be 4.85 meter per second. That, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's reasonable. 10 miles per hour is that as an initial jump speed maybe it's reasonable <laughs> I, don't I don't do sports so i have very poor number sense for these so so this is the second question in the set and um and i uh, i instead of doing it by hand i did it on sage math because you know sometimes people struggle with algebra and this is a as i do want you to develop your algebra skills so don't neglect it entirely 
Um, at the same time, this is a physics class, not an algebra class. You shouldn't let uh, any difficulties with algebra stop you from learning physics.